Thanks for tuning in to 101.3 BKMG, The Farce. Coming to you live from separate places, pre-recorded. Now presenting, The Bane and Mickey Show. Hello, 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 and welcome to the third and final... Uh, Batman episode. Batman episode. It's I was going to say installment, episode. and then forgot the word. Um, just before we started recording, Gavin and I got into a little musical, um, number and then, you know, we weren't recording cause we didn't want to get copyrighted, but we almost sang the whole soundtrack. That's how good it was and amazing. Um, you wouldn't have even been able to tell, honestly, that's how good we were. Yeah. Gavin, I think you and I could do a two person show. <laughs> playing. Oh all- man. Can you <laughs> imagine how bad that would be? Um, it would be beautiful and amazing. That's how good it would be. I don't know if that's the right set of words I would use, but, you know, it's fine. You don't have to use the same words for the same stuff. I would play Batman, you would play Robin, it would be great. Well, that was given. I feel like <laughs> everybody already assumed that. Um, but then I would also play Superman, so... <laughs> you think I would be Batman? During American... Don't you know, I would just have, like, a fight with myself. You could just do, like, the Frankenstein thing where they do half and half. Oh my god. Okay, anyways, seriousness. Before we talk recently. <laughs> before we get too far into our two man show, we are here on our third and final Batcast. Batcast. Why why are what okay, why did we just now come up with that? Because we're done. That's fair. <laughs> this show should just Bane be called and... Gavin and Kendall are dumb. Gavin and Kendall have good ideas, but way too late. A <laughs> uh, new podcast. Late to through. the party. Just kidding, you're already listening to it. Ha 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 ha. Okay. Um. <laughs> all right. Before we get all the way up into it, do you want to share anything you've seen that was good or that you've just seen recently? Yeah. That was like the longest way around <laughs> that question. Thank you. Um. Yeah, I, I finally <laughs> I finally watched Onward. Um, Very good. And it What'd was really think? good. I enjoyed it. Um. It, it's cute. It's fun. Um, Tom Holland and Chris Pratt. What more could you want? Um, I really liked. <laughs> I really liked um, the lore and kind of like world building that they had, and this whole mm-hmm. like fantasy magic world. But then everything kind of, everyone kind of stopped. You know, uh, civilization grew and developed and adapted, and it, I, I was like, this is a like, this is like calling us out as humans because we're so lazy um (laughs) but it did feel pretty rude but it was great um it's funny it's cute it's sad it's heart-wrenching it got some good jokes and some good references basically a a D&D game (laughs) animated no um (laughs) it's great I liked it yeah, what have you seen? I watched this movie called Plus One with Jack Quaid. There was a lot of people I probably know him as a Huey from The Boys, uh, which is part of what inspired me watching it. And it was kind of a rom-com thing. Basically, these two people, it was Jack Quaid, and I got to look up her name before I go too much further and just be a dick. But <laughs> uh, Maya Erskine, or mm. Erskine, they are friends. They've been friends for a long time, and they decide to go to a bunch of weddings together as each other's plus one, so they don't have to be alone. It's uh-huh. kind of like that movie Holiday. If you haven't seen that, which I I don't know if I recommend it, but uh, it's a movie that exists and is sort of corny. <laughs> um, it's kind of like that, but a better version. But they go to all these weddings and they sort of just fall in love, and it's got like a lot of the rom com tropes, but it's also characters that you don't sort of find i don't know they just seem different than your typical romantic comedies Mm -hmm. and they sort of so usually it's like the girl has got something wrong and whatever reason they break up is usually her fault but they actually sort of acknowledge well not sort of they do acknowledge the fact that the guy was actually kind of an asshole wow they did like, that for once? It was his problem and not hers. Uh-huh. Like, he's the neurotic one that's having issues with things, and they broke up, and it's his fault. And 
she didn't really have anything to do with it. Hmm. And he was just being kind of problematic. And he's like, you're right. I was being a problematic asshole and I'm sorry. Please, please almost be with, please be with me. (laughs) And I thought honestly for a second that they weren't going to be together. Luckily they were, but it seemed close. Wow. It was close there for a second and they sort of throw you in the end. Okay. Okay. But it all worked out fine. It was pretty good. So as someone who doesn't really like a lot of rom-coms, should I watch it or no? What kind of rom-coms do you typically like? If you're going to... Oh, any of the ones that you've seen. Uh, I can't even think of rom-coms that I like. Uh, if you're no. thinking of like a rom-com in the sense of it's like kind of Hallmark cheesy soapy... It's not really like that. Okay. Like, There's I like moments uh, of it, Love Actually. But you probably. Me too. I've enjoyed uh, The Switch. It's not as traditional rom com. I think you'd probably like it. I would watch it. It's not okay. even that long. It's I'll like give it a, a try. And then we'll see. It's kind of an indie rom com. It is in, s- in some ways, in terms of like the way they do the romance, it's kind of like. Um, Oh my gosh, I blanked. Palm Springs. Oh, okay. Where they're sort of just like friends and then... They fall in love. Get together. Wow. Yes. It's kind of like that. Oh, okay, okay. All right. Well, now to our bat... Back to our bat cast. Um, the bat cast part. To the bat cast! Don't sue us. That was uh, now the bat cave is open. If anyone understood that reference. I don't even think that was the right notes. Um, (laughs) So, yeah, now we're going to talk about last week. We talked about um, the Dark Knight trilogy. So now we're going all about the Batman films uh, that have come after Christopher Nolan's trilogy. And the Batmans that are to come. And the Batmans that are to come. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah, so I guess... I guess most popularly, The Batman with Robert Pattinson in 2022 now. But before we get to his, we're going to talk more about like Ben Affleck and Mm -hmm. the DCEU. Or is it the DCEU anymore? Is it really just the BEU? Who knows? Because they're just making everything kind of connected to Batman, even in The Flash. Yeah, yeah. Their first they're movie like right trying, after Man of Steel was Batman like v Superman. They're like trying to do what Marvel has done <laughs> with the MCU. I feel like they don't need to, though. Like, they got their own thing. Right. And I feel like, uh, like, I wish they had done Solo Batman before Batman v Superman. We uh-huh. talked about it on the last one, so I won't get too much further into it. But other than that, I feel like they're taking different and more interesting steps than, like, Marvel. Marvel's a lot more chapter chapter uh, in quotes but like a little more step by step it was like here's one another another right and another like you have team, to kind of watch them in order single 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 team single 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 team and i feel like there's a decent enough fan base for like the dc characters and the justice league that you don't especially with like all the cartoons and everything that a lot of people that are going to want to see the movie know so much about the characters that you don't really need all that a ton of origin stuff, at least right up front. So that was cool. That's one thing I like about it. And I've, unpopular opinion, maybe, I think Man of Steel is a really good movie. And Henry Cavill is great as Superman. I didn't hate Man of Steel. Um, but I'm not a huge Superman fan. Um, so, I don't know. But I it was, was not fun. really until Man of Steel. I'll say it. Yeah, like Henry Cavill is fine. It's whatever. Yeah. Um, as for Batman versus Superman, Dawn of Justice. I like that one too. Um, it was fine. I mean, it was you know when I watched it, it was entertaining. It was you know I was entertained for two hours. What whatever. Um, I haven't two seen and it half hours. Yeah, I haven't seen it since. Um, I did really enjoy. I like Jesse Eisenberg. And his, what he's done. And I really enjoyed his Lex Luthor. I feel like, I don't know. I feel like it just, it didn't quite hit right. 
it was like it was different it was like right yeah there. oh my god i, didn't I forgot mind the what differences you, sorry i didn't even mind like the i didn't mind the hair i didn't mind how he i mind a little bit how he lost it but that doesn't bother me a ton i just feel like his characterization of it was just like it was like so close it was not yeah quite. like it wasn't quite there but i did like what was there mm-hmm. what was there i liked the draw the rancher thing's a little weird but also jeffrey dean morgan as thomas wayne and lauren cohen yeah. as martha wayne what a beautiful makes me really want oh. that flashpoint batman with honestly them as batman and joker that's honestly the only, that'd be the best yeah that's all i want out of my life yeah love it we love it and they're only there for like two seconds but it's fine we love them anyways. Um, yeah, what are your thoughts on Amy Adams playing Lois Lane? I liked her Lois Lane. Uh, I liked that she wasn't an idiot. I <laughs> liked that she figured out who Superman was because mm-hmm. she's a good journalist, uh-huh. which she's always said to be. But and they like, don't they don't like match. She never figures it out. A female in, woman of interest being like a dumb blonde kind of yeah, falling for the whatever she's like oh, all right she's actually this big hulking farm boy his More or less. they were big and hulking but superman is big and hulking and but he's got glasses on so that can't be superman oh my god the uh and i know there's a little that just makes me think that. of this is a little off but the doctor who episode where, <laughs> <laughs> where he's like drawing glasses on superman to prove a point anyways Great but set. yes, I liked the way she was like an actual good independent journalist mm-hmm. and she didn't really wasn't like her only value was not to Superman. Right. Which is a lot of what you see in the other ones is like she only has as much value as Superman has and she doesn't go any further than that. Otherwise, she's just kind of like, I'm just I'm just right. Lois Lane and I'm here. Because every other time it's like, you know Superman, right? It's like, yes, I, I know suppose. Superman. <laughs> but, you know, I've done other stuff. Like, I don't care about that. We want, yeah. So that's, I like hers. I mean, I like, um, I would say, I can't think of a casting choice. A different one? That I didn't like. Oh, oh okay. In their iteration. I mean, yes, there's different choices you could make. But I feel like the cast they have for everybody is really good and like good picks. And the problems are more writing and directing and editing and studio stuff. It's more behind the scenes and it's not the people playing them's fault. Yeah. It's not like you cast Pee Wee Herman as Batman. You know what I mean? <laughs> A little drastic. But <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I... Now I want to see, like, Pee Wee Adventures in Gotham. And he's... <laughs> oh, my God. Well... I, yeah. I was going to say, you I could Batman. cast... You could almost cast him as, like, a 1966 version, like, villain. <laughs> you know what they should do? They should keep the dark tone of the DCEU, but do, like, the 1996 version of Robin Gosh. with Pee Wee <laughs> Oh my gosh. Basically, as Batman? Burt Wait, Robin. Pee-wee Herman as Batman? No, no, no. Basic, so think Ben Affleck Batman with Burt Ward Robin. Oh my gosh. That's what I'm saying. Uh... <laughs> Holy Superman, Batman, shut up. Shut <laughs> up. <laughs> Except it's Pee-wee Herman making all the Holy Superman comments now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> or Holy whatever. Holy something, Batman. Holy. And I think Ben Affleck is a really good Batman. I would say that, you know, he's up there with Keaton Mm -hmm. and Christian Bale. I'd put him at number three. Number three? What about Adam West? Adam West is his own category. We are Something we talked about (laughs) on the on the first one is Adam West is his own category, so he doesn't like he counts. But he has he's he's top of his his own category. It's like Adam West here in his own circle, and then like all the other Batmans. <laughs> and this is before. If this was a pie chart, Robert not Pattinson's chart, uh, Batman. Yeah. So you know maybe he'll fall down the list, but mm-hmm. as of right now, it'd be like <laughs> Keaton Bale, Affleck, <laughs> Affleck maybe a little better. I don't know, but that would be my top three. 
Okay. And then Kilmer Clooney, whatever. Kilmer Clooney. Also not including Kevin Conroy. Yeah. Um, the animated voices. This is strictly live action, just so I don't get torn apart in any comments that we have. Right, 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 right. Right, right, right. We'll talk about comic animation things another time. Yes. Um. Yeah, so I mean, that's Batman versus Superman. Um, Justice League. I actually uh, haven't seen the Justice League movie. Just wait for Zack Snyder's Justice League. I don't know if it'll be better, but I don't know if Zack Snyder's Justice League that they're going to put on HBO Max will be better, Mm -hmm. but I know it will not be as craptastic and it'll be at least more consistent with (laughs) the other (laughs) movies that he made in that. I am the only, yeah. And I mean, there's nothing again, like the only reason I haven't seen it is again, I'm not like a huge DC fan of the heroes. It's Mm -hmm. fine. Um, And when I was little, the one I really enjoyed was Green Lantern. Uh, and then that was ruined by the movie. No, I still like Green Lantern. I also like The Flash, but like, but so I haven't, I just didn't have any real like um, motivation to see the Justice League movie. If you buy, which I'm assuming you're going to get a, the Snyder Cut copy, then I'll watch it. All right. I also have the. Justice League, the the other one, Joss Whedon, not as good one. Um, I saw something interesting about Green Lantern, is that so? I don't know if you watched the Justice League cartoon growing up at all, but that version of Green Lantern was John Stewart, mm, mm-hmm. and so some a lot of people growing up know John Stewart as Green Lantern. So putting Hal Jordan as the forefront, even though he is. The second, technically, Alan Scott, then Hal Jordan. But we'll call him the first, the second, whatever. Don't get mad at me. Um, so putting him as the forefront of a Green Lantern movie is a little weird because a lot of, not a ton of people know who he is. Right. And Jon Stewart might have been a better choice, which seems like where they're going. Oh, they're doing the Green Lantern Corps show, so that's probably what will oh. happen there. Very yeah. excited about that. Also going to be on HBO. I just want to thank HBO for providing us with good DC content <laughs> and access to it. Yeah, thank maybe you, I'll finally Max. watch some of We'll see. I don't know. I'm uh. <laughs> I like never even finish much of the Marvel ones. It, I just have a lot to catch up on and I haven't. <laughs> but yeah, what did you think of Justice League? Did we get to that part? <laughs> Oh, I don't know if we got to that. I just sort of tangented on to <laughs> Yeah, I think we did Green a tangent Lantern. before we even got to that. So I mean, it was... The worst thing about Justice League is all the potential mm-hmm. it's wasted. Like, it just seems like it could have been so great, which is I like why a lot of people, including myself, are excited for the new one. Uh-huh. Just is to see that, like, now what? we're going to see it at least in its original intention and version, and maybe it'll still be bad. How much but do you think will... is going to have been changed? I just saw something that said there's two and a half hours of new content. God damn. But they're only shooting like four minutes. So I'm not sure how that works out. I feel like. Because they have a bunch of old content that they just didn't. I'm assuming like, it's like old content, but getting finished and some reshoots. But like Joss Whedon seems like we did a bunch of the movie and you can tell. Because mm-hmm. hmm. it feels like he's trying to mimic Avengers. It feels like they tried to do event like he tried to make Avengers, like he tried to make Justice League like they had done the MCU with all the separate movies. So you are supposed to know who these people are, but you right. don't. And you have no backstory on them, and it doesn't make any sense. And it's really weird. Well, do and they then have the CGI they... mustache scenes and yeah? It's just sort of a put together mess. It feels like two directors were on it. Did they even? Um... Because there's like a Flash series and there's a Supergirl series, and 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 then I mean there's the Wonder Woman movies. Did they connect those at all? In the, the movie? shows, no, for sure, no. The Wonder Woman, yes, they connected it a little bit, not a ton, mm-hmm. but I think that was by design. Like they did, they talk about it and they mention it. But they don't like get too far into it. I think 
they were playing it smart by not talking too much about her past because her sequel, 1984, is also in the past, so you don't want to get too much into like what she has done, so you don't contradict yourself and fall into a story hole, which is very smart. <laughs> very smart. Um, I just saw, on IMDb at least, they have, they're doing a Justice League miniseries, and they're doing yeah, a that's Flash movie. Yeah, that's Snyder's Justice League. Yeah, and they're doing a Flash movie. Uh, supposedly they've been doing a flash movie for the last like five six years <laughs> they're supposed it keeps getting to be doing done and rescheduled and whatever yeah but bringing us back to batman and that is they supposedly are going to have michael keaton return and mm. ben affleck return mm -hmm. which is like related to my comment earlier are we making a dc extended universe or just a batman extended universe right. where we just put batman in everything and not ruin and kind of ruin the characters and their individual interesting stories. Yeah. Do you think the 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 next the next the Zack Snyder Justice League series will connect to his cut? Well, the series is the cut. That is his cut. Oh, okay. They're breaking it up over episodes. From oh, what I understand. Oh, I thought it was just okay. Never mind. No, it's all the same thing. I'm dumb. It's fine. Um, it's fine. Speaking of Keaton returning for The Flash, uh, I think we just need to talk about how he is now, well, how he is in the Marvel Universe. Um, mm -hmm. And since he's also in the DC Universe, are they actually both in the same universe? I mean, that would just play into the DC multiverse right there. Hot topic in this, for you all. In this universe, consider. he's Batman. In this one, he's not. Right. And with the Flash, he'll probably be traveling dimensions and stuff. So, so at what point sense. do we get a Batman multiverse into the Batverse? <laughs> I feel like that's what Lego Batman kind of is. <laughs> kind of. I feel like you get a lot of elements of that. That's Yeah, you did say that. <laughs> um. Yeah. Okay. So And I'll be I wish it's kind of sucks. I wish they weren't bringing Michael Keaton back for this project because I've always wanted a Batman Beyond live action where Michael Keaton plays the old Bruce Wayne. Ooh. That would be really cool. That has been mine and a lot of other fans dreams is to have Michael Keaton play old Bruce Wayne in a Batman Beyond movie. That would be so cool. Probably just a pipe dream, but that's all right. It's okay you have to, to make it. By the time I get to do anything like that, it'll probably already have been made a bunch of times. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, okay, so that's the Batman, Superman, Justice League. And then we have the Batman movie coming up. Do we want to talk about that first or do we want to talk about these other ones first? Uh, let's talk about it last. I feel like it's okay. kind of so. It's since, I mean it's relevant, but yeah, other versions and iterations like the Gotham TV show and mm -hmm. Lego Batman and. Suicide Squad. What? Mm -hmm. <laughs> he only really shows up a little bit. Well, Joker but it, yeah, but it's the uh, the villain. More or less. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So yeah, let's do Gotham because I guess that was next. Mm -hmm. Kind of. I mean, chronologically, super big timeline. Um, order, but whatever. The Gotham series. Uh, did you watch it? I did watch it. I watched the first like three seasons, three and a half seasons. Mm. Um, More than I got. Yeah, I really like. Again, I really, really love the DC villains, and so I really liked. I love all the, practically all of the portrayals in this show of the villains. Um, Robin Lord Taylor. The, is amazing as um, Penguin. I would say, um, why are all of these? No, nope, hold on. Um, <laughs> I would say, um, -da 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 -da. um, what the fuck? Okay, who the hell? Why? What? Where's his name? Um, I really like the the scarecrow um, storyline. Um, the the 
fucking hell, I can't find any of these. Um, Corey Michael Smith is probably one of my favorite Edward Nigma iterations. Um, it's amazing. Um, who's the... On a, okay, so I haven't watched this in a while, so I'm going to mess all this up. The whole Joker-ish timeline with... Cameron Monaghan. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. With Jerome Valeska. Mm-hmm. Is, I kept up with this show a little bit. I just didn't watch it after the first season because I just could not. Yeah. Um, I really like... I like that timeline. Um, So I really liked all of the villain stories and you really get in depth with Gordon's backstory. I really like that. Mm -hmm. And, and all of these um, introductions to the villains and kind of building up the Gotham world. What I didn't like is the whole Bruce Wayne, (laughs) Selena Kyle arc. And so a lot of the time, that's why I stopped watching because I'd be like, Oh yeah, villains, this is awesome. And then halfway through the episode, you're stuck doing dumb shit with these kids that I don't really care Mm -hmm. about. And then, finally get back to the, so there or there be episodes back and forth where it's like and i'm just like i don't care really about bruce wayne right now and i don't really the whole selena kyle i don't know it's weird um it's, it's i don't all know very weird it's all very weird so i would either skip that part or like whatever and it just kind of lost me part way through but i really love the villains part of this it, it i just could not get into it yeah i don't know maybe it was just me but <laughs> I did like Sean Pertwee as uh, Alfred. Uh huh. Yeah, he does a son great of Alfred. It's so third sweet. Doctor John Pertwee. Yeah, he he's a very sweet Alfred. I like that. Um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Um, the James, the Gordon Bullock kind Bullock um, kind of dynamic is interesting. Has an interesting um, mm-hmm. timeline. Um, I think it started off really, really well, and I think it just faded. Um, yeah, it sort of just went off the chain, sort of like Riverdale. If yeah, anybody watches or keeps up with that, I did like David Mazuz as younger Bruce Wayne. Mm-hmm. He does a good job. Yeah, and my my thing against Bruce Wayne and Selena Kyle is nothing to do with the actors or or her portrayal. It's some of the writing and some of the yeah the plot, and it's like okay, are we focusing on the heroes or villains? I don't even know. Um, but I love Ben McKenzie as James Gordon. I think he does a great job. And I just love all of the the whole arc there. Because it's also like the story is like, okay, is it a Gordon story? Is it a Bruce Wayne story? Or is it a villain story? Like you've got to choose. But it's kind of just all of them randomly. So, yeah. But uh, yeah, I'll watch it. I I would watch it for the villain. Things I think I know. Maybe at some point <laughs> I'll rewatch it, but I don't know. Yeah. Right now. It is interesting to 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 learn about all the kind of lore and backstory of Gotham. You get these great um, uh, mob backgrounds with all the villains. Um, Ra's al Ghul is in it. Um, I think it would have been better for the show if they pretty much just had Bruce Wayne in the beginning and then shipped him off till the end. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Honestly, yeah, you've got well, like because Tom then you Grunny, can just Carmine focus on Falcone, Gordon. you know, all these name, you know, all these backstory things. But no, yeah, keep going. Well, it's just so you could like, like we were kind of saying, is focus more on Gordon and the villain story, and less on Bruce Wayne. Right, because like, it's not that because like, is it a Bruce Wayne story or is it a Jim Gordon story? Like, you can't do yeah, both well. You got to choose and decide and. Bruce Wayne doesn't really get involved until he becomes Batman and gets older. So it's like, why is he here? <laughs> um, but, you like know. I get some of the point, but it's whatever. Yeah. Um, so they that made was their Lego show Batman. and they did what they wanted. Or, no, sorry, that was Gotham. <laughs> um, but now Lego Batman. Uh, yes. Honestly, one of my favorite movies. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. I love the Lego. That was kind of a surprise. The Lego movies. Well, I've only seen the Lego movie and the Lego Batman movies. I haven't seen like Ninjago or whatever. But the Lego Batman movie, everyone needs to see it. Um, I remember going with like a couple people from school, like college school. So we were five college students. We went to see the Batman movie as scholar scholarly film students do. And we were the oldest people in the theater. 
And the theater wasn't really full, very full anyways. But I can tell you that all the, okay, oldest parents besides, oldest people in the theater besides parents, I can tell you the parents were so annoyed by us. <laughs> Just being dumb shits, laughing at literally everything. It's great. And Will Arnett. <laughs> what a great Batman. Great. Um, Zach Galifianakis as the Joker. I was. I remember when that first came out. Like that cast. If you tried to make a live action version, wouldn't it work. It does not work. It, it just works. Just, this is the only iteration yeah. where it works. Like, yeah. Um. Anyways, I could watch this movie so many times, and it never gets old. It's just great. I love it more. I like it more than the Lego Movie. Yes, I agree. But it also has a lot more Batman. So that's true. It's not really fair. It's not a fair <laughs> comparison. Um. And then the second one. hasn't come out wait one, what are, oh i'm thinking of the second lego movie never mind yes second there is they, not it hasn't come yet out a yet. second lego batman movie but is there going to be it's supposed to i mean there's Supposedly. nothing no information for it all right well maybe they will maybe they won't I don't but remember, um yeah honestly. lego batman great um yeah you kind of get into this multiverse sort of thing um it's so funny <laughs> I'm just looking at the photos. It's hilarious. Um, Robin choosing his uniform. <laughs> the whole father-son arc. You actually get, like, Batman adopting Robin sort of thing. <laughs> but the children of the orphanage call me Dick. Well, children can be cruel. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so good. It's so good. I think we'll have to just talk about that movie one day. I'm going to write it down. Um... So that's Lego Batman. If you haven't seen it, I don't know what you're doing with your life. Especially if you like Batman. Like, what are you doing? Yeah. Like, you have like, to have seen it. It's basically like they took all of Batman history and were like, yep, this happened. And here he is now. <laughs> all of it. All at once. Yeah, it's pretty good. It's, I mean, it's more than pretty Plus good. Plus Alfred dressing up as Adam West Batman. So yes. I don't really know how you can do any better than that. And then, of course... We could talk about uh, Holy Musical Batman. Holy Musical Batman. Okay, I, we are not getting into that again, though. Um, <laughs> this one, this unless is, you're a big fan of Star Kid, you probably you would have never no heard idea this. what the fuck we're talking about. Um, but this holy is one of my shit, favorite. You have Star to Kid. watch it. One of my favorite Star Kid shows. Um, it mm. does have some problems, but. <laughs> I feel like the it's so pleasantness good. is outweighs all the problems it does have. Honestly, um, yeah, I know all the music. Um, it's the best thing. The costumes are amazing. Go look them up. Oh, beautiful. Um, the music is amazing as always. Um, the the Lang brothers are brilliant. The scripts. Um, it's, oh, it's just great. It's the cast great. is beautiful. Um, this was the introduction to Jeff Blim, and I fucking love Sweet Tooth. I oh fell in gosh. love with that character. Um, That's the only. Oh man, I love Sweet Tooth so much. Yeah, He's the it's best. such a good. Oh was, my gosh, goals is to go around gag. with pockets full of candy <laughs> and just pull. I've done it before. Have you really? <laughs> I did it once. Um, yeah, I bought candy specifically for yes. that. Yes, it. it was um, great. And then just the jokes about all the, all the Batman villain tropes <laughs> and themes is the best it's one of the best storylines um the whole batman superman thing is great um obviously the cast joe walker and brian holdman or holden <laughs> have you Dylan and Saunders, uh Lauren and uh Lake, nick or, lang oh, robin Warren lopez Warren, oh my gosh <laughs> it's just beautiful great amazing um Go watch it. Have you ever heard of Mr. Makes a Spitlick? Of what? Have you ever heard of Mr. Makes a Spitlick? <laughs> no, because I do my damn job. <laughs> What's Two Face gonna do? Rob the Second National Bank of two dollar bills? Yeah, yeah on, on February second. <laughs> Chris oh. Allen is both Two Face and Alfred. Oh man! <laughs> what a great Alfred! This was before the war. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um, yeah. Beautiful things. It's a great, great homage to um, to Batman. 
Um, I mean, all of Starkid's stuff productions are brilliant homages, but <laughs> this one, it just like holds a special place in my heart. I don't know why. It's so dumb. It's so funny. It's so clear. Um, Cause it's so but, dumb and great and yeah. clever. And, and, and it, 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 it takes like almost every Batman and has something to say about it. You know, it's like, it's not just commenting on 1966 or like Christopher Nolan. Christian like, Bale yeah, at the time. like it's it's literally all of them. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, it's more about the character of Batman than the yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the, the characters and the story. villains and the as well as being a really good original story Batman, with great Robin. original songs. Oh yeah, a beautiful soundtrack. Uh, <laughs> you know, how can you not sing "fuck you" to everyone you pass on the street? I don't know. It's great. Um, <laughs> suddenly you just break out into the title song and people think you're insane, but it's fine. They already thought I was insane, so I'm fine. Great. Yeah, same. That's why I'm in this <laughs> lovely mental ward. <laughs> Anyways, go watch it and then go watch every other Star Kid show. That's my yes. plug. Sponsor us, please, or hire us. I don't know. I don't care. Hi. Um, I don't know if they can afford it, but thank you, Starkid. Uh, <laughs> go check out Starkid, support them. That's a sponsorship from us. To, to them. him. Great. <laughs> Let's talk about Joker. Um, We're just going to kind of skip over the Suicide Squad, I think, right? Can we make a mutual agreement? I don't I mean, know. There's Do you have a... anything to say about it? I'm excited for James Gunn's version. <laughs> and I... it's not a sequel. Yeah. No comment. That's okay. Basically, all I have to say about it. <laughs> Moving on. Oh, Margot Robbie. Thank you. Yeah, she did like a lot of her own stunts too. Will Smith. I mean, there's good moments in it, but overall, kind of a. Anyway, moving Anyways, on to the Joker. Moving on to the Joker, Not 2019, directed by Todd Phillips, starring Joaquin Phoenix. Um, I love highest grossing this. R-rated movie. Yeah. I love this movie. Uh, I know a lot of people, it's kind of like hit or miss for some people. Um, I just love the performance and the directing. Joaquin Phoenix did a beautifully amazing job. The story takes the character, not in like a way to um, romanticize Joker or like condone his actions, but... Mm -hmm. The whole first half of it isn't about the Joker. It's about... It's about Arthur Fleck. Arthur Fleck. And I mean, mm-hmm. he's not even credited as the Joker. He He's Arthur Fleck. And it just takes this, like... What do you... Something got... The... the I, don't, I don't know. But it's just a really good story about, like, how how you treat people and, like, what happens when you don't treat them right or the right like Ill consequences and... of your actions and i i don't know i really loved you it for get that. what you fucking deserve yeah um of course it won best performance by an actor in a leading role for joaquin phoenix um and best achievement in music by hidor wada tier i don't know how to pronounce his name i'm so sorry um and then it got nominated for basically everything else <laughs> Um, best picture, directing, screenplay, cinematography, costume design, makeup, and hair, film editing, sound mixing, sound editing. Um, it did really, really well, and I'm I'm really happy how it how it came out. But oh my god, yeah, let's talk about like freaking design <laughs> is amazing. Um, I think I need to rewatch it just to get the full. Yeah, I think it's on. Um, everything. Um, HBO. It's on HBO. Yeah, mm-hmm. I do want to rewatch it. Um, because I haven't watched it since I saw it in the theaters, but I did see it twice. I only saw it the once, the and it was out of theaters. Um. Yeah. Uh. Do do Mark Friedberg did production design. Um. Yeah, I really like it. I don't think there's a lot I can say. If you haven't seen it, I don't know. Joaquin Phoenix really dove into the into the character of Arthur Fleck and really mm-hmm. committed, and it shows. Uh, and he deserves everything. 
uh, he received for it. Um, and anyone who hates on him, like, fucking go away. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, yeah, I, yeah, I don't know. Admittedly, the theme is potentially problematic and there are some issues with right the mental health portrayal of it but i think at least in the intention it's well intended right and it's like yeah because it also is it's a mix of this story on arthur fleck and yes this is the joker who we all know is horrible beyond words Mm -hmm. so Yeah. And I know there was a lot of backlash because of, like... The mental health portrayal. Mental health portrayal. And then also just kind of, like, romanticizing violence in a way. Mm-hmm. And I get that. But I it's not the... But also it's about. not the only film to romanticize <laughs> violence, so... Also true. Um, Yeah, but I think it was really, really well done. I loved it. Uh, Francis Conroy as his mom did a wonderful job um okay i just remembered this part how do you feel about the whole bruce wayne connection spoiler spoiler sorry i mean yeah so there's a moment if you don't care about spoilers or you've seen it just a reminder there's a moment where like bruce wayne is on the news and whatnot and arthur fleck goes to wayne manor and interacts with a young bruce wayne and there's a lot of implication towards the fact that it is that they're related. Yeah, that part's weird. I don't know. I don't. I think it made an interesting story moment, but I wouldn't put any. Right. I think it's just weird sort of because it's anything in it. I don't know. It just comes out of nowhere, kind of, and then I don't know. But yeah, I don't know. It's interesting because it's also like. I don't even know. <laughs> but because it's, it's like, it's, it's still like trying to connect it to the Batman universe. It's, it's, it's again, one of that like half and half kind of things because it's still trying to connect it to the Batman universe while also kind of being its own story. I wish they hadn't had the Bruce Wayne connection, but I like the inclusion of Thomas Wayne sort yeah. of running for mayor. I think that part of it, I just I don't know. Yeah. I don't know how necessary trying to connect the rest of it was. I mean, it, it works okay. Yeah, it's like I enjoyed the, the Bruce thing. Wayne parts, and then I think when it when he had the interaction with, or no, the Thomas Wayne parts, and then when he had interaction with the Bruce Wayne with Bruce Wayne, it was like okay, maybe that was a little too much, but it's fine. I'm over it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I'm over it as well. I'm over it. It's and then it's we also just have about it. that great moment of Walking Phoenix dancing down the stairs, like. Do we want to talk about what we think so far and think about uh, Battinson? Yeah. AKA the Batman 2022. Yeah. Um, I'm excited. I'm, I'm excited. excited. Um, I will have, I, I do have to say in the trailer, he looks a little too much like Daniel Radcliffe and it throws me off. <laughs> um, like an angsty Harry Potter six kind of vibe. It's fine. I could see that. <laughs> but um, I'm interested to see how, what he does with the character, especially after seeing, you know, we talked about Robert Pattinson, I think a little bit, um, but especially after seeing like the lighthouse, um, I'm interested to see how he, takes this character and takes the role it is very big shoes to fill so i'm not gonna like take and make any like i don't want to have any expectations or anything but i'm also sort of hoping he doesn't really try to fill those shoes at all or try and like he just sort of i want him to do it in his own way and take it as his own thing yeah i don't want it walking yeah yeah you know yeah Mm. I will say I am very excited for a lot of the villains that are mm-hmm. that are showing up, um, and who they're going to be portrayed by. And yeah, Paul and Dano who they're the being portrayed by: Colin Farrell as Penguin, Paul Dan- yeah Riddler, um, Zoe Kravitz. Um, and I'm excited to see what Andy Serkis does as Alfred. I like Andy mm-hmm. Serkis. I have a feeling he'll be a little more Jeremy Irons esque. Mm. Would be my guess, especially how they're doing the. 
sort of universe or the way the tone anyways yeah. seems like it'll be a little more like Sean Pertwee, Jeremy Irons esque, a little gruffer. Uh-huh. But I don't mind that. I think it's I like that. Yeah. I was reading this Batman Year One comic where Alfred isn't even his actual butler. Like he's just a friend of Thomas Wayne and after his parents die, he, becomes- he just starts taking care of him. Ooh. Like he's supposed to take care of him, but he comes in as like a butler. He's like the godfather and then like Kinda, yeah. Take, but he just doesn't everything. take that responsibility per se. He's just like, Ooh. Yeah, I'm your butler. <laughs> anyway. Let um, me try and raise you, child. I just realized it Jeffrey didn't... Wright as uh James Gordon. Yeah. Yeah. That'll be good. Also worth noting that I like Jeffrey Wright. Probably I could be forgetting something, but this is the first time James Gordon will not be a white guy. He'll be African American. Yes. Which is, you know, no real reason for him to be a white guy anyways. So <laughs> Yeah. Um I was yeah, I mean I would say otherwise the cast isn't very diverse. Selena Kyle. I take it back. Selena Kyle's also Oh, in it. oh sorry, Zoe Kravitz. Yeah, yeah, Selena yeah. Selena Kyle. That's gonna be great. I love that. Um Yeah, I'm excited. It's got some good names. Um who's the, who's the And this is just what we know of it, so you know. Right. Um no directed by Matt come. Reeves. Mm-hmm. Um he's got some good stuff. Since it's going to I'm pretty sure they announced it's gonna be a trilogy. Do you at any point want to see the Joker? And would you want it to be Walking Phoenix's Joker or a whole new iteration? Um Well, aren't they making a Joker too? Yeah, I wish they weren't, but they are. Yeah, I wish they weren't as well. Um as much as I love Walking Phoenix, I think the world from that film is kind of its own thing. Mm-hmm. Much kind of like, unfortunately, like the Suicide Squad kind of is. Mm-hmm. So I don't really know if it, I mean, again, we don't know what the movie is going to bring. So maybe it would connect into the world or not. I don't know. But I feel like it's such its own thing that I wouldn't really want it to be connected. Depending how the how the the Batman movie goes, maybe. Um, I don't know. What are some other villains you'd maybe want to see? Uh, I mean, they get they get Riddler, so mm-hmm. I'm good there. I love Joker. Um, like it would be interesting to see another well-known. Scarecrow, mm-hmm. um, especially if we could oh, dive man. more in depth into it. What like a Scarecrow, almost more like the Arkham games? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I'd like to see Mad Hatter. Oh, that would be a good one. Um. We don't have... Depending on how f- fantastical or, like, fantasy that they make the world, I think Mr. Freeze could be interesting. Mr. Freeze. Um, but again, I feel like he's sort of... I would love for them to do a Mr. Freeze solo movie yeah, like they did Joker. That would be interesting. That's, like, um, that's my jam right there. Two-Face and Poison Ivy are good classics, but they've also been done multiple times that it's, like, you know... I feel like there's a they could make a good version of poison ivy i feel i wouldn't hate to see a two-face mm-hmm. but i also feel like aaron Hickart did a really good two-face yeah so i don't know if i want to see another one for a while unless they have something like real good up their sleeves something yeah um i agree what with, if they did i agree with, what if they did like a uh a two-face but he's not actually two-faced he's just morally two-faced Ooh. That's interesting. Um, I'm, I don't think it's as cool, though. I like Paul Dano, and I'm interested to mm-hmm. see how he does the Riddler. Um, in my eyes, since I love the Gotham Riddler so much, he's got some some decent playing up to do. But we'll we'll see we'll see how it goes. Um, again, it's gonna kind of be like I hope he just takes it kind of in his own way, and we see some new stuff or new, you know. I'm going to steal this one from Jordan on our last episode, but I would love to see Hush. Oh. Or um, I think it'd be funny. They, I wouldn't want a whole movie with him, but if they had like 
an opening or something where he fights like Calendar Man or one of those weirder. <laughs> I know. Villains. I was gonna say. I was gonna say Calendar Man would be uh, hilarious. Definitely not as the main villain because I don't think you could do a whole lot. Your days are numbered. Um, <laughs> Maybe like Killer Croc or Man Bat if they want to go. Yeah, like more monster they could movie-esque. choose a really dumb, Ooh. like quirky one with for funsies for like yeah, like an intro scene or something. He's just I just had a really cool man. Batman trilogy idea. What if mm. they did? Sorry to interrupt, but no, no, like no. a monster movie, Batman trilogy type thing. But they did like Man Bat, Killer Croc, yeah, Solomon Grundy. Killer Croc would be um, <laughs> interesting as well. Um, those ones that are like they're more monstery, but you do them more like horror monsterish movies. Ooh, interesting. Firefly might be a diff- an interesting one. Um, yeah. If they do decide to do a Robin, I would love for them to do a Jason Todd Red Hood Robin. Oh. If they're going to go with it, because I feel like Dick yeah. Grayson has been done. It would be, has to be Jason be nice or it has see, to be Tim. Yeah, it would be nice to see a new version. Um, mm-hmm. I agree, though, with uh, it would be really cool to see Mad Hatter. Um, yeah. Oh, I I like to have they have... Carmine Falcone in, in this movie. Mm-hmm. John Turturro. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it'll be. I'm. I'm. I'm gonna see it. I have no Cautiously expectations. optimistic. And about the bad future. Yeah. I I'm keeping. Yeah, like I'm not. I don't want to set psych myself up or anything. Like so, but you know, I'll go see it. As will I, unless it's out in theaters and the virus is still raging on, which hopefully it won't be by 2022. But I guess we'll see. Shall we do some random topics? Yeah, I think so. Before we wrap all the way up? I think so. Unless you had any other last thoughts, but I don't really. Uh, Nope, I shared all the thoughts I had. Would you willingly become possessed? I guess it would depend on why. Right. Who's possessing like, you be, is also a question. Who's possessing me? Why are they possessing me? What are they planning to do once I'm possessed? Is it a demon? If Which demon? Un- <laughs> and if they unpossess me, am I going to get in any kind of trouble? And am I Ooh. okay going to jail over whatever yeah. they do while Do you have to take the repercussions for being possessed? And would I be okay with it? Like, if they possessed me and killed a bunch of people that I didn't like, am I okay with just going to jail for that? Right. Or just going to the... I don't know. Brings up a big moral actually. issue. You know, there's a lot of what-ifs and 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 whatnot. I think they're... Yeah, I don't know. It's so situational. Um, I'd say no. You know what? I'm going to go with no because I don't... There's too many particulars. I don't know if I really... Like, are you still conscious? So, like, can you feel and... What's see happening? everything that's happening and i don't i just if so i don't think i would want to feel that like not being in control of your body and your mind no i'm gonna that's go fair. with no as well well thanks for listening to our three-part bat cast yay hopefully you were not too off put by our tangents on batman <laughs> and you'll come back next week for yeah. Whatever we're talking about, maybe Jojo Rabbit. Yeah. Probably Jojo Rabbit. Or we'll talk about a movie of some kind. I think it is Jojo or Rabbit. Or something else. I don't know. We'll see. It looks <laughs> like Jojo Rabbit. It's, we're going to talk about whatever the fuck we feel like. Please come back. <laughs> it's our podcast. Please come back. Don't leave us. Uh, yeah. Cool. Cool, cool. Thank you. Thank you. Hope you enjoyed. Stay tuned. Subscribe. All those good things. Bye. Follow us on social media. Bye-bye.